order. It is Monday, October 18th. This is a meeting of the regular school board uh, located in the middle, Winnick County Middle School large group lecture on Monday, October 18th. Meeting notices were sent to members of the press, members of the school board, and were posted on the front doors and or in the vestibules of the district school buildings. This is a meeting of the Board of Education in public for the purpose of conducting the school district's business and is not to be considered a public hearing. There may be time for public comment as indicated in the agenda. The meeting will also be available to watch live at www.youtube.com backslash Winnicani. Um, Due to the annual meeting, we will have a very limited time for open forum tonight. Um, if you do have an intent to speak, you're asked to sign in. I'm not sure I'll get to everybody, we'll try. Um, I'm hoping everyone was able to view the answers to previously asked questions either on the website or in your weekly parent letter. Um, again, limit your comments to two minutes. We ask that you keep them constructive and respectful. Public comments will be heard during the open forum only, and once we moved into the official business, we will no longer take comments from the public. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Board members, roll call, please. Stelsner. Ledoux. Here. Verich. Here. Zeller. Here. Ronk. Here. Cundy here. Hansen. Here. Um, recognizing our administrative team, we have Ms. Mashad, Mr. Smith, Mr. Muneer, Mr. Katie, Mrs. Dodd, Mrs. Hughes, Dr. Larson, Mr. Jerabek, and Mrs. Knapp. Um, please sign in as a visitor. Um, because of the nature of, of tonight, we will have actually three separate sign-ins, one for this meeting, one for the annual meeting, and one for the uh, business meeting to follow, which will be to certify the levy. Um, we'll open it up for open forum if Mrs. Larson will... So we will have to stop the open forum about 10 minutes to seven. Two minutes, yeah. Uh, Megan <coughs> Keller. All right. I come to you this evening with deep concern regarding how this board is choosing to communicate with parents, community members, taxpayers, et cetera. During the October 4th board meeting, there were many questions and concerns brought to the board. We were reminded that the board will now strictly be following the bylaws, so we had two minutes to speak, no questions will be answered, and everything was to be directed toward Mrs. Hansen. While several board members chose to not even make eye contact with those at the mic, Mr. Cundy took diligent notes for that, I thank you. It is not easy to address the board in person while on live stream. Much more difficult than sending an email. Once those had signed in, had shared, Mr. Cundy commented that it's not easy to sit up here meeting after meeting and hear all of the negativity. The meeting went on and nothing was said regarding if, when, or how anything brought up would even be addressed. After leaving, I was frustrated, concerned, and felt I needed to contact Mr. Cundy on October 6th to ask if an agenda item could possibly be added for the next meeting, allowing more of a dialogue be between the people here and you as board members. Allowing both sides to provide not just the how it's going to be, but the why. I feel it's very important, and to, we still have not gotten that from even the, email, the letter email that was sent out. It was very black and white. There was, anyways, I appreciate the answers, Peg. <laughs> It's frustrating to not be able to have open dialogue with you as the board 
All of us express concerns and questions. We leave the meeting. And we have no idea if, when, or how we're ever going to, first of all, hear answers, and we have yet to have an opportunity to go back and forth. While I'm no par parliamentary procedure pro, I did my homework and knew that this item needed to be had submitted in writing no less than seven days before the next meeting to be considered for the agenda. So I reached out again to Mr. Cunny on October 11th and was called, told to contact Mrs. Hansen. Upon doing so, I verified that I was hoping to get added and why. I was told that being given the opportunity to address the board is purely out of respect. It is not a requirement. She then shared that our next meeting on October 18th is the annual meeting, so time will be very limited. I asked if there was a time limit on this meeting, and her response was, no limit, we just have to start at the posted time. I then asked about special board meetings, much like the one scheduled for this Thursday, and she shared that special board meetings are called by the board under special circumstances. The point here is that there are options for community dialogue if the board wants it. But as you can see from tonight's agenda, after two weeks of asking, no item was added to allow dialogue. Within your bylaws, policy 123 states that the board must maintain two-way communications with citizens of the district. The board shall keep them informed of the progress and problems of the school district and the citizens shall be urged to bring their aspirations and concerns about the district to the attention of this body. Also within your bylaws, policy 167.3, I went through the whole thing, states that public comment shall be permitted as indicated on the, other, on the order of business before the board takes official action on any issues of substance, I would say that that is where we're at, and or at the discretion of the presiding officer. Anyone having a legitimate interest in the actions of the board may comment during the public portion of the meeting. There are some very complicated topics in front of you all right now. As much as I appreciate everything that's going on behind the scenes, I ask you to please follow your sworn in policies. Thank you. John Luxander. Good evening, I hope everyone's doing well. I'll keep it short and sweet. I think that everyone is starting to see a lot more parents getting more and more together, more and more vocal. And as you've seen, we've gone to the point of uh, beyond social media to actual real media, newspapers and things of that nature. Uh, and it just behooves me uh, that at some point quickly uh, that we get some sort of decent response and an appropriate communication and get some resolve on the issues that we seem to be on so uh, different sides of the spectrum. Thank you. Adam Ahrens. So there's a special board meeting in three days to take up the mask or the mandate or whatever you guys call it. Why not just make the decision now? I mean, you have a referendum coming in a few days or in, in April, and this is how you spend our money, that you can't just make the decision three days earlier? You know, I mean, it just makes no sense. So I suggest maybe someone make a motion. Why not do it? We, you know, you know, we have a lot of people, we're not going away anymore. Um, you guys got lucky. You know, last April, we weren't engaged. We're engaged now, and we're not going away. This is not going away, I promise you that. This is gonna get stronger and stronger. So don't keep dividing us and doing things that make us keep coming here time after time again. I, I just don't get it. I talk with many people on a lot of different spectrums, and it just, I, I can't fathom where you guys are coming from ever. I, it blows my mind, I and mean, I, you know, I would like a little more dialogue. Like, maybe let's not do a school meeting. Let's just talk one night, get it all out, just talk for two, three hours. You know, let's let's discuss things. I mean, in April when you three went unopposed, like I said, that's never going to happen again. I promise you that. So, you know, we've been bringing in a lot of people, talking about a lot with a lot of people, meeting outside of the school. 
uh, you know, outside about the board and, and your guys' behaviors and the virtue signaling. I mean, it's just, it's just got to stop. Aaron Bartelt. Good evening, everybody. Just want to touch on a couple points here. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I want to talk about was school boards being effective and school boards not being effective. And I thought it was interesting to do a little bit of research and look at some advice from the National School Board Association. Um, now, if you've been paying attention to the media at all in the past few weeks, you'll know that I'm probably not a person who's a big fan of the NSBA, considering the fact that they're calling people like myself and other concerned parents around our country domestic terrorists. So for me to cite their advice uh, means that I really believe that's good advice. So I'm just going to read an excerpt from a report they put out in 2019 called The Eight, Char Eight Characteristics of Effective School Boards. <clears throat> and I'll begin the quote. Board members in lower performing districts also provided little evidence of considering data in the decision making process. In these districts, board members frequently discuss their decisions through anecdotes and personal experiences rather than by citing data. In many cases, the study noted the board talked very generally about test scores, pause, I think we could interchange test scores with the word safety here, and relied on the interpretation made by the superintendent or administrator. As a result, board members believed the superintendent owned information, leaving it to the top administrator to interpret the data and recommend solutions, end quote. You know, it's within your authority to delegate decision making to the administrator. That is without a doubt. Um, but I think in the important decisions that are so broadly affecting the entire community and our children, why? Why would we do that? I think there's a strength in having a variety of opinion in seven of you rather than delegating that authority to one person. I don't believe that's fair to that one person, and I don't believe that it's fair to the community because I think they should have a broader representation. I'll leave that, and the last thing I want to touch on here is uh, the survey that was sent out to the community. Um, and, and I know there's been talk of no response and no hearing, no, no discussion, no feedback. There's some feedback. You guys, you heard that we want a survey, and you sent a survey, and I thank you for that. Um, I'm, I'm disappointed in some of how the, the survey was worded, and I just want to give one example here. There were four questions on the survey that asked about which options best fit your family's needs. The first one gave four options, virtual learning, cohort model, in-person learning with mandatory masking, in-person learning with optional masking, four options. There are three follow-up questions that gave you an either or out of all uh, that basically contrasted a couple of different options. One said cohort or in-person learning with mandatory masking, one said cohort or virtual learning, and one said virtual learning and in-school learning uh, with mandatory masking. I thought it was very interesting that <coughs> The whole reason people have been coming up here and been upset, at least in the past couple of meetings, has been about the mask policy. Now, that's what prompted the survey. But out of these four questions, that option of in-person learning with optional masking, which is what everyone here is proposing, is only represented one out of four times. Every one of the other options are represented three out of four times. So to me, and I can't, I, I don't pretend to know what's going on in someone's head when they're preparing a survey, but to me, it looks like the survey was intentionally formatted to obtain the data that you would prefer to have. So, and I also noticed that there was no instructions at the top of this survey telling anyone that they could omit answers or instructing them in any way. It just, it was very vague and honestly it didn't seem very professionally done. Um, so that's disappointing. I mean, that's, that's all I can really say is it's disappointing. So I hope, that, I, just, I hope that we can make some progress here. I hope that on Thursday when we do make a decision on what we're gonna do, I hope we make the right decision. And I hope that you just understand that, I, I can speak for myself and I can assume to speak for a lot of people here, please don't mistake passion for personal animus. Um, I, I think we care and maybe that comes out as being a little bit rough or heavy handed or whatever it is and if that's been my, you know, if that's what you've experienced from me, I apologize. I, I don't want you to think that. It's coming from a place of caring and I hope that we can move forward and learn that the community cares and they just want to be heard. Okay. Thank you. Bonnie Blinz.
I'm speaking tonight because I have a vested interest in the school um, because I do have grandchildren in the school. And um, I'm, my big thing is the masking issue. And um, uh, you claim that in the board's decision for masking our children is about keeping the children safe. I stand here tonight challenging and questioning your ability to even know the full scope of keeping our kids safe. Um, there's a realm of things involved in keeping kids safe that goes above and beyond anything anybody but a parent would even understand. It is about e every aspect of their life, not just what goes on in school. However, and sometimes unfortunately, what goes on in school has a huge influence on their whole life in general. Nothing is stronger than a parent's instinct to protect their kids and keep them safe. And unless you are a parent, you would have no idea what that instinct feels like. That instinct comes naturally. Um, that parent instinct is uh, strengthens when someone other than the parent claims to know what is best for a child that is not even theirs. I can only compare it to a mother bear protecting her cubs. She would fight to the death to keep them safe. Figuratively speaking, the same goes for parents and their children. You, uh, Ms. Larson, you or any of the school board members are not medical experts or scientists. The effectiveness of masks has been so controversial, it is anybody's guess or opinion if masks offer any real protection against the virus. If there was any concrete evidence involved in determining the effectiveness of masks, there would not be a controversy whatsoever. Depending on which doctor you will uh, ask, you will determine the answer you get. Or one day a doctor may tell you that wearing a mask is effective, the next day the same doctor will tell you it is not effective. I'm sure you understand my point. Look at the data that has been sent to you by parents almost every single day with the statistics of Winnicani and the surrounding school districts regarding masking kids. Mostly no difference in masking and not masking. I'm not sure what makes you uh, think you have the authority to, me to make medical decisions for our children against the will of the parents. I'm not sure what gives you that right. Your duty as administrator and board members is to focus on our kids getting the best curriculum and education. Your positions do not give you the authority to hand out medical advice and make decisions medically for our children based on what you believe or take away our freedom of choice. From my perspective and, my, and many parents' perception, you are uh, pushing your beliefs onto what you think is best for the kids. Making medical decisions for the kids is not your job. You are totally oblivious to the fact that there are more parents out there against you than with you. And that is because um, you don't listen. Um, you, we are waking up to what's going on here and truly the battle has just begun. We will not back down when it comes to the welfare, physical, mental, and health, uh, mental health and education of our children. We will not accept your tyrant attitudes and we will not accept being blown off and ignored by you. You guys are not smarter than us, you're not better than us, and you are not above us. So please don't act like you are. I want to also talk briefly about the survey that was thrown together. Interesting that the choice of answers that were given were basically all leaning to benefit your agenda with no place to even give an opinion or disagree. That survey was written and rushed into circulation with no bipartisan input. Even though it was rumored that you involved and took advice from one specific parent, this rumor was fact-checked and found out to be false information. It, this uh, survey should have been written bipartisan with opinions from both sides, which would have included uh, parents' opinion. Uh, you wouldn't listen to when one parent asks why you're rushing the survey. We know why. You needed, to, you needed ammunition to push your agenda. By the questions you asked and the answer choices, things were becoming quite clear. There were no answers that went against your agenda. It appears that your thought process is Peggy's way or the highway. It also became quite clear that you don't have any regard for any parent's opinion on what is best for their own child. You are pushing uh, many of your own ideas, um, and a lot of the people involved, parents, feel, I'm sorry, with your twisted ideas of what you think you have the authority to do to our kids, and many others feel you are the wrong person for the job, along with most of your board members. Your agendas, decisions are one-sided and go against the definition of what a good school board is supposed to be. Uh, you have all been elected to this board in good faith to support, listen, and take into consideration what the parents who know better than you what is best for their child want and need. You are supposed to be open-minded, objective, and good listeners. You should be committed to public involvement and accept the will of the majority. I don't see that with the school board. Your own beliefs are not always what is right, and you need to realize that. You need to open your minds and listen. And we put our trust in you. You broke that trust. 
You chose not to listen to us. You shut us down and you made your own decisions without consideration of anyone but yourselves. You chose to be demeaning and unreasonable. Again, I'm wondering, you know, uh, you work for us and I think you need to start uh, thinking that way. You are not kings, queens, rulers, or otherwise. You do not own our children, you are not the boss of our children, and certainly you are not the ones in control of their lives and medical choices. You need to stop name calling and start being reasonable and listen wholeheartedly to what we have to say and work with us instead of against us. You can make this real easy or you can continue on your path to make this an unnecessary battle for everyone. In the end, one way or the other, the majority will rule. We as parents, grandparents, and other citizens in this, communi uh, in this community concerned for the welfare of our children while in school are awake. We will no longer sit around and watch your one-sided personal agenda of unfold upon our children. We are on to you and we will take all necessary action to make our voices heard and become part of the decision making for our kids. It is our right to do so. We will not back down or go away. And you are making this much harder than it has to be. Okay, at, the, at this time, I'm gonna to have to close the op open forum so that we can move into our business. And, and you have three more minutes left. Um, I said we were gonna close the open forum at, at 10 to. I have a list of several here, so um, I'm gonna close the open forum right now. We will have another meeting on Thursday that will include an open forum as well. Um, So at, the, at this time, I will entertain a motion for the consent agenda. Um, before the meeting, I had invited the board to respond to any of the comments, so they're free to do so. Um, for tonight, I'm saying if there was an option for Thursday to maybe look a little bit different. There going to be a time constraint on Thursday? There shouldn't be, no. Why is okay. there a time constraint? There's some referendum annual missing. Because we have uh, posted the annual meeting for 7 p.m. tonight. So it's our, it's our annual meeting tonight. So, and we have some business we have to do before we can move. Before we have, we can, I, I understand, ma'am. annual meeting we have to file the uh, follow the posted times that is why we chose to have the special meeting on Thursday to make sure that everyone could have the time to speak and be heard and we, we have to follow it it's not on the agenda for the meeting afterwards um, So who, who is that? that? Um, I, uh, Are the ones that want to speak? Yes, that signed up to speak. Okay. Okay. Please, please approach the mic, yes. Hi, my name is Jill Pascarella. I do not have children in the district right now, but I did have two children go through the district and I had an amazing education. Both are in college. Um, I understand the mask frustration. I work in the district that's been masked since day one. So I want to tell you, I think you're doing an amazing job and I appreciate 
how you've watched data and been optional, and now I know that masking is here because you're, you're watching all the crazy data, and I know how hard that is. So I'm just here to say thank you to all of you. I can't imagine how, what a difficult time this is to be a board member or certainly a superintendent. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, now I will close the open. F oh, okay, sure. Hi, my name is Amy Bushing. Um, I grew up in the district. I've lived here my entire life. I've had three daughters graduate from the district. I currently have a fifth grade son. Um, for the past seven years, I've been a kindergarten aide and a special ed aide. And before that, I was a preschool teacher at the Winnie County Co-op Nursery School. So I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to the administrators, the teaching staff, anyone else in our buildings. Um, it has not been easy the past year and a half to do what we're doing, and we all are there to do what we feel is right for the children, to give them love, compassion, kindness, grace, and educate them. So I just want to say thank you. I know it's not easy, but we are all there for the same reason, and that is to educate the children. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, now I will close the open forum. Thank you, Donna. Um, mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, I'll entertain a motion for the consent agenda. Move we approve the consent agenda. Motion by Ronk, second by Verich to approve the consent agenda. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Stelzner. Aye. Ledoux. Aye. Verich. Aye. Zeller. Aye. Ronk. Cundi I. Hansen. Aye. Um, administrative reports, any questions from the board or anything from the administrators that they would like to add? I just have one thing for Mr. Cady. Um, the uh, study on the bleachers and the safety and so on, um, that has taken place or will be taking place? I haven't gotten it yet, but okay. um, it has already taken place. It's annual. Every year we have them okay. inspected. Okay. Um, board reports, any communications? There's none. Okay. Committee reports, human resources, none. Financial planning? Nothing. Uh, public relations and marketing? Nothing at this time, but there is a 9 o'clock a.m. meeting tomorrow uh, with regard to the facilities considerations for the district, and anybody that can make that meeting, that would be great. Okay, thank you. And policy? Nothing at this time. Okay. And I will entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. So move. Motion by Kundi, second by Zeller to adjourn uh, the meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Uh, moving into the um, annual school board meeting. Um, again, meeting notices were sent to members of the press, members of the school board, and were posted on the front doors and or in the vestibules of district school buildings. This is a meeting of the Board of Education in public for the purpose of conducting the school district's business and is not to be considered a public hearing. There may be a time for public comment as indicated in the agenda. The meeting will also be available to watch live at www.youtube.com backslash Winnicani. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Official notice of the meeting, read by the clerk, please. Notice is hereby given to qualified electors of the Winnie County Community School District that the annual meeting of said district for the transaction of business will be held at the Winnie County Middle School Large Group Lecture, Winnie County, Wisconsin, on the 18th day of October, 2021, at 7 p.m. Mark Cundy, District Clerk. Thank you. 
Um, I will entertain an election for the chairman for the meeting. I move that we elect Donna Hansen as chairperson of Second. the annual meeting. Uh, motion by Ronk, sec second by Ledoux to elect uh, Donna Hansen to be the chairman. Um, roll call, please. Is that a roll call? It's just a vote. Okay, all right. Um, everyone in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, um, presentation of the budget by Ms. Mrs. Knapp. Hopefully, can you guys all hear me? Yep. I talk really loud, so if I start getting too loud, just you know, throw something at me. So tonight we will briefly talk about the 2021-2022 budget and tax levy. Please note that the published budget was presented using preliminary information from the state. That is what will be voted on. A final revised budget incorporating the changes we learned of on October 15th, last Friday, will be presented at a November board meeting. I will also address the changes that we know about as of today at the end of this presentation. So I ask that you hold any questions until I'm through. Every year I present a quick overview of the actual budget process. As you can see by the flow chart, the budget is an ongoing process throughout the year, culminating with this meeting tonight. We work closely with Baird Public Finance throughout the year in obtaining and providing information in order to begin this process, not only for the short term, but for the long term, which is five years. You may hear me reference the Baird model throughout the year. This model is used by numerous school districts in anticipating costs and revenues for the short and long term. The administrative team also works closely with the business office throughout the year in trying to develop a budget based on what we believe our needs are in the upcoming year. As information is provided by the state, we tweak these numbers in order to provide a more realistic budget as we get closer to finalized numbers from the state. Some of these finalized numbers include September 3rd Friday count, final equalized property values, and equalization aid certification. Since the publication of the budget, we have since received finalized numbers on our equalization aid and our final FTE count. Let's review how revenue is calculated. The state limits the amount of revenue we can raise per child through the state aid and local tax levy. It is mainly driven by the district FTE membership. The maximum we can collect for each child in our FTE count for 21-22 is $10,000, which is the same as it was for 2021. This visual shows that the revenue limit authority based on per pupil history and state allowable increase is reduced by the amount of state equalization aid. The remaining amount is what we are allowed to levy. Did I miss something? Yeah. The remaining amount is what we're allowed to levy to our municipalities. We also levy for the school voucher program, which was approximately $131,000 last year. This increases our total, our overall level authority, levy authority. The equalization aid received is determined by our pupil FTE, our allowable tax base, and other smaller factors. This visual shows the impact of equalization <coughs> if it goes up or down. If equalization aid goes down, the local tax levy rises, and if equalization aid goes up, which it did this year, the local tax levy has provided some relief. In our project projections for 21-22, we anticipated approximately $94,000 more in state aid than last year, which decreases the amount in local sources. This visual shows that the school tax levy is based on the amount we can lev levy for general and non-referendum debt, as well as for referendum debt. These amounts combined comprise our school levy. Oof, that's tough to see. So let's see if we can do this. So this is gonna, my little clicker thing is gonna work. Okay, so let's look specifically at the estimated levy presented here for 21-22. Again, based on the numbers that we had as a date of publication. The state uses a three-year rolling average for our revenue limit. This year, our three-year average was 1,519 students. With the state per pupil aid at $10,000 per student, that equates to $15,190,000 in total revenue that we can collect from both state and tax dollars. When you add our $240,000 non-recurring referenda, it gives us a total revenue limit of 15 million, my clicker's not working, 15 million 430. This is the last year of the 240,000. The board will make a decision in January whether or not to ask, ta ask taxpayers to continue this. 
subtracting the July aid estimate, July 1 aid estimate provided by the state and the t state aid tax, the state aid for exempt computers, the total allowed revenue we can raise from the community is $7,632,616. The proposal is again to levy $100,000 for ongoing capital projects with the remainder to be used for general operating costs. There is an additional $1,890,000 to pay off existing debt, which was approved in previous referendums. The total estimated levy calculates to $9,522,616, which is approximately $300,000 less than 2021. Now let's take a look at our overall projection, which is a summary of what is presented in the annual report book. This book is available on the district website and is available by print upon request. The district's operational fund is Fund 10. There are other funds for specific purposes, Fund 27 for special education, Fund 30 for debt service, Fund 40 for capital projects, and Fund 50 for food service. Fund 10 is where all our general operational expenditures take place. The annual report publication defines the differing funds in detail and shows the revenues and expenditures by fund. In our initial projection, Fund 10 revenues are anticipated to exceed expenditures by $7,789. In looking at our revenues per source, this chart shows that our state and local sources comprise the majority of our overall budget, while the remaining amount is made up of transfers, mainly open enrollment dollars and other income to include some federal grants. The expenditures by object show us that since we are a people intensive industry, that 65% of our Fund 10 budget is for salaries and benefits. The next largest expenditures are for purchase services, which includes transportation costs. 5% is for supplies, 11% for capital equipment, and 1% for debt retirement. There is also less than 1% for interfund transfers, which is the interfund transfer to Fund 27 for our special education needs that are not covered by state aid. Now let's take a look at our proposed tax levy. As you can see by the projection, our proposed tax levy is decreasing by 0.74 from prior year, or 9.52%. This levy is affected by the amount of state aid we receive and the local property tax values. Again, this is a proposed amount based on preliminary information, not information that we received as of last Friday. Some notable items for 2021, 21, 22. For the 2021 year, we had a planned deficit of approximately $732,000, not knowing what we were about to encounter with COVID protocols or any funding we would receive. After a budget revision in April 2021, our projected budget deficit was changed to approximately $83,000. The final audited result was actually a $295,000 surplus. While some of this is due to the additional funding we received, the majority is due to the diligence of the department heads managing their spending, as well as some benefits restructuring we did, as we continue to look for ways to maximize dollars without reducing services. I do want to point out that with the loss of FTE students in 2020, which was experienced by most school districts in the state, the recovery from that loss due to the three-year rolling average for revenue limit purposes will not be recovered until the 23-24 school year. Now let's talk about ESSER. As part of the Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Security Act, CARES, the Emergency Relief Grant Program helps to provide funds to help local education agencies respond to changes in student needs due to COVID-19. The determination of what each school district receives is primarily based on the count of children from low-income families. There were three rounds of funding. The first round, we received the minimum of $40,000. With these funds, we recovered costs of hotspots needed for virtual learning and a portion of our supplies. The total costs incurred from March 13, 2020 to June 30, 2020 was $67,796. Round two of ESSER, we, are, we were awarded $155,741. With these funds, we recoup costs for upgrading technology, specifically Clever Touch boards, to facilitate virtual learning. We also recoup costs for Apex Learning, which was our virtual learning platform used in 2021 for those choosing that option. Total costs under round two were $457,709.
Round three of ESSER funds, we are currently guaranteed 349,770. And as of today, are waiting to hear if we will receive any additional funds in this round. While we wait to hear what we will receive in additional funding, our current plan is to use the third round of funds to recoup costs from the prior year of our virtual learning platform, address identified learning loss, and to upgrade HVAC infrastructure in order to improve air quality. Some completed and planned upgrades. With this visual, I also wanted to point out some of the major upgrades we completed, completed during 2021 and those we currently have planned for 2021-22. I'm not gonna read them all to you, it's just give you an overview. Some of these upgrades had been planned for future purchase. However, due to COVID, we're accelerated to meet the needs of our students, specifically the purchase of Chromebooks for our elementary students. Our, our planned upgrades for 21-22 are scheduled based on what we currently know. Depending on community feedback regarding upgrades, these planned expenditures may change. That's where we stand as of the initial projection. Now let's look at changes that have taken place since that time. With the release of information last Friday, October 15th, we now know that our total re revenue limit has increased by $184,825. This is mainly due to approximately 170,000 we are going to levy for the school voucher program. State aid increased by $112,046 from our original projection. This allows us to levy for additional dollars of 1890000 to pay off debt earlier while still reducing our mill rate. Our initial projection that was published was 7.04, and from the final numbers as of October 15th, the mill rate is 7.10, which means $7.10 $7 per $1,000 of property value. In 2021, the mill rate was 7.78 per $1,000 of property value. That means a $150,000 house will see a decrease in school levied property taxes of approximately $100 if the valuation of their house stays the same. We continue to have a fav favorable mill rate in comparison to other local districts, as is shown by this slide. That ends my presentation. Any questions? Monica, can you get and go back to the sure. slide that you showed? This was a question from the public as far as our dollars and so on for ESSER funds and or dollars that we received according to uh, the funds to receive as well our projected costs. Sure. And I think it's pretty important that we understand that um, because there was question on where our money was spent or how many dollars we received. And remember, this is all audited, if I'm not mistaken, Correct. right? Correct. Yeah, all the numbers here are audited. We have an audit every year. Um, so. And the 40000 and the one we we've already received. I have not applied for that last grant round. There's some specific requirements that we have to fulfill before we can even do that. Um, but, it, you know, we identified costs that were co specifically COVID-related, and that's how we we were able to identify the actual versus what the grant was. And again, the key is that um, the grant dollars are awarded based on the number of low-income families you have. So we don't, we don't really have a high percentage of that. So what is our current debt for COVID right now, looking at these numbers, not receiving this, this last round of 349? I, I couldn't tell you that, Becky, right off the top of my head. I mean, I'd have to go back and look, but clearly, you know, you can take the 467 less the... 155 and then the you know the 20,000 from the round one yeah but I can get that for you if you need it okay thank you the other thing I wanted to point out Monica and last year of course we realized this by not having summer school as far as that number of students in our racial of average three-year average is the reason why we saw some of the decrease that's part of it yeah we usually had about uh, 45 FTEs that that equated once you you've factor it in per DPI regulations equated to about 20 students. And I believe, don't quote me on this, I believe last year we were only able to count maybe five total. So that did have an impact. But the numbers started going up again this year. Thank you. Thanks, Monica. Thank you. At this point, I will entertain a motion to temporarily suspend the annual meeting and begin the public hearing on the 21-22 budget. So moved. Second. Motion by Verich, second by Ledoux, <clears throat> to temporarily suspend the annual meeting and beginning, 
begin the public hearing on the 21-22 budget. <coughs> Roll call, please. Stelzner? Aye. Ledoux? Aye. Verich? Aye. Zeller? Aye. Ronk? Aye. Kondiai Hansen? Aye. So at this point, we can take any questions from the public about the budget. Said there was requirements that was there what requirements that need to be met I, I would love it if i could give you that answer but i can't they're still working on it right now um, the problem is the feds are determining what needs to be done at their level and they're pushing it down to the state and then the state disseminates it to us i just got an email i would say in the last two days that we're going to have to meet as an admin team to try to figure out how we're going to meet those benchmarks that they've given us what are the benchmarks you required I, I don't know the specifics. I, I know that a certain percentage has to be used to address learning loss. Um, but again, it, it's like an evolving thing because you know the, the feds take a while to get it to the state, the state takes a while to get it to us. So we've just got it over the last couple of days. So I couldn't speak intelligently about what the specific requirements are. Monica, I just may be reading between the lines. I don't want to make any assumptions. Are there any things related to masking children, um, uh, safety protocol in the schools that you've seen in yeah. in those guidelines? Not that I've seen yet. I, the majority of it that I have read, and Don, you've looked at it as well, I think. We're going to meet here in the next week. I think the majority of the discussion has been, and correct me if I'm wrong, if you've seen something else, addressing learning loss. Because clearly last year was such an odd year with everybody being virtual. So. Can you, once you know those guidelines, please provide us the information so that we can share it with everybody? Sure. Thank I think you. we're meeting in the next couple, I don't know, weeks to kind of hammer that out. So, yeah. <coughs> Anything else from the public regarding the budget? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to reconvene the annual meeting. So moved. Second. Motion by Verich, second by Kundi to reconvene the annual meeting. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. I will entertain a motion to adopt the tax levy for the 2021 22 um, by the electors in attendance. I move that um, the tax levy for 2021 uh, be it resolved that the sum of $7,632,616 is hereby levied against the taxable property of the Winnicani Community School District for current operation and that $1,890,000 is levied against that same property for debt retirement and that $100,000 is levied against the same property for capital projects for a total tax levy of $9,522,616. Second. Motion by Ronk, second by Kundi to adopt the tax levy for the 2021-22 uh, by the electors in attendance. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, I will entertain a motion to adopt resolution number 1-2021 to authorize the Winnicani Community School District to sell personal property belonging to the school district. So move. Second. Motion by Kundi, second by Verich, um, to adopt resolution number 1-2021 to authorize the Winnicani Community School District to sell personal property belonging to the school district. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. I'll entertain a motion to adopt resolution number 2-2021 to authorize the Winnicani Community School District to sell capital assets belonging to the school district. So moved. Second. second. Motion by Verich, second by Zeller, 
to uh, adopt resolution number 2-2021 to authorize the Winnicani Community School District to sell capital assets belonging to the school district. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And I will entertain a motion to adopt resolution number 3-2021 to authorize the Winnicani Community School District to establish the capital expansion fund levy amount. So moved. Second. Motion by Kundi, second by Zeller to adopt resolution 3 2021 to authorize the Winnicani Community School District to establish the capital expansion fund levy amount. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? And I will entertain a motion to set the date for the next annual meeting for next year, October 17th, 2022. So, so moved. Second. Motion by Verich, second by Kundi to set the date for the next annual meeting for October 17th, 20. Yeah, it. it was Becky. Becky was the one who made the motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Motion by Kundi, second by Ledoux then. Um, for October 17th, 2022. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, any other business for the annual meeting? Okay. And any questions or comments from the floor? Uh, entertain a motion to adjourn the annual meeting. So moved. Second. Motion by Barrage, second by Ledoux to adjourn the annual meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Okay, and then we will move into the special school board meeting. Um, um, following the annual meeting, um, this meeting is a meeting of the School Board of Education in public for the purpose of conducting the school district's business and is not to be considered a public hearing. There may be time for public comment during the meeting as indicated in the agenda. The meeting will also be available to watch live at www.youtube.com backslash uh, would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Board member roll call, please. Stelsner. Here. Ledoux. Here. Verich. Here. Zeller. Here. Ronk? Here. Cundy here. Hansen? Here. Um, administrative team, Ms. Mashad, Mr. Katie, Dr. Larson, Mrs. Dodd, Dr. Hughes, Mr. Muneer, Mr. Jerebeck, Mrs. Knapp. Okay, I will entertain a motion to certify the 2021-22 tax levy. Okay, I move. move. Oh. Go ahead. I move that we adopt and certify to the municipalities the 2021-2022 tax levy in the amount of $9,593,472 to include a general operations fund 10 levy of $7,603,472, a referendum approved debt fund 39 levy of $1,890,000, and a capital projects fund 41 levy of $100,000. Second. Motion by Verich, second by Ronk to certify the 2021-22 tax levy. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Ledoux. Aye. Verich. Aye. Zeller. Aye. Ronk. Aye. Condi Ice Telsner. Aye. Hansen. Aye. And I will entertain a motion to adjourn the special school board meeting. So move. move. Second. Motion by... I'm sorry, was that? Ice. Okay, thank you. 
Um, motion by Ledoux, second by Kundi to adjourn the um, special school board meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you.